So for Leo now, when he takes over, is he all free and clear? He's just had a bit of a, he's coming off a bit of a controversy about that video from him being in a nightclub. Um, it, does he have the support of his party colleagues? There's certainly no question of any sort of a, a leadership challenge against Leo Varadkar at the moment, but I don't think free and clear is exactly how I would describe it either. He hasn't had the best uh, few years. You obviously had the, the leak investigation, which ultimately didn't decide to prosecute, but there was a split decision in SIPO as to whether or not to investigate that. You had the video that obviously did the rounds recently, which is entirely a personal matter for him, which which has, in some people's eyes, damaged his standing and questioned uh, his judgment as well. So he isn't coming into this um, the same way he did when he was last Taoiseach and took over, where he was this sort of a Teflon presence in the party where those who did vote for him instead of Simon Coveney said, well, this guy's really charismatic, he's a leader, he's going to win elections for us. Since then, they haven't really won a huge amount of elections. They've lost, I think, it's five by-elections now. At this stage, they did have good success in the European elections and the local elections weren't too bad either, but also had one of their lowest ever results in the general election back in 2020. So there isn't that proven track record that this is a guy who can win elections. He doesn't have a huge amount of manoeuvre to shuffle around his cabinet a team or even the junior ministers and last night he told his parliamentary party every job will be assessed on his merit he's going to be asking anyone who holds office to confirm they're definitely running at the next general election before he even considers reappointing them and that he thinks he has one of their strongest parliamentary parties in a while but for those that he does want to promote there isn't a huge amount of room to do it without seriously annoying other members of the cabinet or junior ministers so it's not like uh, 2018 when he had 30 something jobs to give out to Fine Gael TDs because there was no coalition partners it's a bit more tricky maneuvering this time uh, I'm Adam it's the second term he's only, still only 43 but he hasn't been the political force that many probably expected like Sean just said mm. there do you think that he'll be a bit more wiser to the job this is a second coming and op another opportunity to do things maybe a little bit differently yeah 100 percent and I actually think Having been number two to Michal Martin would be a big benefit to Leo Varadkar. And he talks a little bit about this recently at a, in his speech. He talked about how he has learned some things from Michal Martin's leadership. Because if you think about it, Leo Varadkar uh, was only really at the cabinet table under Enda Kenny. He only really saw one Taoiseach in action. Yeah. So he could only learn from that and then bring his own stuff to the table. And recently he was talking about how Michal Martin has used cabinet subcommittees as opposed to one big meeting every week to kind of divide and conquer and keep things moving and keep everybody on side. And that's something he has already committed to saying he wants to keep that subcommittee structure in place. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he seems to um, like how Michal Martin does this thing where he keeps spots free in his diary every week in case something comes up like a last minute thing that he needs to address. So whether it's meeting a certain group of people about an issue that is really gathering pace, he has spots free where he can go, right, well, let's meet them here. Okay. And Leo Varadkar says that's something that he thinks is a great idea. Beforehand, he would have his diary packed every week yeah. and do everything he can, and he'd never have spots to react to things. And he said, all, he has already said that this is something that he's learned from Michal Martin that he's going to take into his leadership now. They do seem to have a good relationship ever since the confidence and supply agreement in the former uh, uh, government. But when it comes to around the table, they both missed the point of having a minister from west of the Shannon last mm. time. Like, there was a lot of issues with all of that, with the amount of women who are in government as well. Are we going to see any massive upsets on Saturday? Or do we know exactly what's going to happen around the cabinet table? Well, I think what's probably most likely to happen is the players will stay the same, but their positions on the pitch They're say, going to move around. will move around. Yeah, so we already know that the green ministers are going to stay where they are. We know public expenditure and finance, they're going to swap positions. Leo Varadkar has to move into the Department Taoiseach, so that creates one vacancy. But it doesn't look like there's going to be anyone, say, promoted up to the cabinet okay. table. But there may be switches, and there probably will be in the junior ranks and those sort of positions. So that's something I think we'll see. But we won't see that on Saturday. We'll see that next week, probably on Tuesday at the, the cabinet meeting. Right. Sean, do you finally just... The way Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael have been recently, they're kind of gelling into one. Do you think that... Leo Varadkar, they might, he might try and diverge the parties a little bit over this two-year period to try and show a clear divide going into the next election. And what way do you see it going? Yeah, I, I think there, there will be an element of that, but it's a tricky one in a coalition government. It's mm. the same issue that Fine Gael found with Labour when they went into the 2016 election. They decided to campaign that one together, say, re-elect this government. And actually, if the election were today, uh, based on all the polling numbers, the government wouldn't be too far off 
being returned as high as Sinn Féin are in the polls. It would only take a good day really for one of those parties to maybe put them back in the frame. Yes, they have all been insistent. Uh, Miguel Martin in particular has been insistent. We will fight the next election as individual parties, put our own mandates out there. That's a lot more difficult when you've spent five years together on the same sort of a platform. So it, it is a really tricky one. And if you do start to, at some point, if you're a Leo Varadkar, think, well, maybe Fine Gael would be more successful if we weren't as attached to this, again, more difficult because they've been there for 12 years, obviously. That's when divisions start coming, and that's something that's more likely to bring down a government ahead of its time. So, yes, they will try and stand on individual points. And I think what you will see is in individual departments, they will claim a win as a, a Fine Gael policy that they got through the government or a Fianna Fáil policy they got through the government. Uh, but it's quite a, it's a tricky one to, to put forward to the mind of the public who maybe aren't following yeah. this as in-depth in and out as political okay. nerds like us are.